then it means not one will fail. <laughs> so I don't uh, mean to uh, discredit fortune tellers, but I was just too tempted to tell the story. <laughs> um, so um, after that, I just need to tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up. Uh, actually, I may be a fortune teller myself. I grew up uh, in a household. My great aunt was a shaman, actually, actually practicing shaman who was possessed. There are two kinds of uh, shamans. One is inheritance shaman who in inherits the business from the ancestors, and the other is just suddenly a person would get possessed by the gods, and uh, they have to respond. Anyway, my great aunt was possession type, and I grew up. My mother worked there preparing for the food of the feasts that were being drawn uh, either for exorcism uh, rites or uh, healing ill persons. Uh, all kinds of uh, ceremonies were being held, and she worked, my mother worked in her aunt's um, uh, shaman house. And so uh, as we were growing up, she brought the food from the shaman's house, and that's the food we ate. We were poor, we had no other food. And so if it is true that whatever you eat is what you are. I ate the shaman food, and maybe I'm a shaman. <laughs> After uh, doing some research for this talk, I just began to pick the uh, materials, research materials were coming out of my ears, and I began to think, well, maybe after this, I could go down to Intradong and hang a sign, fortune teller, major degree divine, and start breaking in some money. That beats writing. <laughs> I labor slaved over uh, writing this book for 10 years. I didn't make a pen. So anyway, so I um, may have a little shaman's uh, street. Um, and uh, to uh, begin the main part of the lecture, uh, let's see. There are four or uh, twelve Chinese uh, animals, um, and the most important uh, aspect of this whole uh, lecture is the um, meaning of yin and yang. Uh, the meaning of yin and yang, uh, the yang uh, is the masculine force, <clears throat> and the attributes given to masculine, masculine force in yang are action, positive, motion, rising, light, brightness, all positive characteristics. Feminine, the yin, Characteristics attributed to him were dark, uh, underground, uh, shadow, activity, receiving the action from the male. So, in other words, the definitions, the characteristics attributed to these in and yang. Uh, themselves seem to show uh, gender bias here. Uh, this definitely was, these ideas were created by uh, groups of men. Male uh, defined characteristics were given to in and men. And five elements are water, fire, um, uh, wood, metal, and uh, a missing one. Earth. Earth. Earth, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, now, um, right here, I would like to point out that uh, there are 12 animals and there are five elements. And so these 12 animals, they interact with one another through five different elements or five different phases. Okay? And so, in short, in simple terms, there are 60 
uh, types of actions or 60 types of uh, events or phenomena. Uh, and because human beings are given the uh, characteristics of each of these animals, and these animals interact with one another through these five different elements. They end up, uh, they end up being sixty um, total types of phenomena, or sixty types of human beings. There are sixty types of people, and I have a little trouble with this system in that there are billions and billions of human beings. We are all, uh, we have um, different chromosomes, we have different makeup, we are e we Christian, at least, and many other religions too. We believe each individual is an individual. There's no clone out there. When you compare that idea of a human being with only 60 types of human beings existing, and you fit your destiny and your life into one of these 60 types. Uh, this is uh, basically what uh, the Indian and Five Element School and the Fortune Colors, who base their uh, predictions, um, all boil down to. You will be given one of the 60 types, and they will proceed from that to tell you your fortune and counsel you on your life's problems. Another thing is, um, how did these animals, 12 animals, get set in that order? Why did it, why is the rat the first one? Rat is the first one. Then it's ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. And of course, there are some legendary stories that say that, oh, there was a king of heaven, he was going to um, talk to the creatures about uh, the meaning of life, whatever. And uh, he invited uh, animals. Uh, and the first 12 animals who arrived, that arrived, that became set as the 12 animals on the zodiac sign. There are stories like that. But one, um, very, uh, very concrete um, basis. Why they were given these orders is this. You ready? It's, it depended on the number of toes per limb that an animal had. Okay? So, for example, why is the rat first in order? Usually, an animal has the same number of claws on its front and rear legs. The rat has four toes on its forelegs and five on its hind legs. Total nine toes. And in Chinese um, uh, thinking, anything that is very rare, the rarity gets the highest rating. And so the rat got the highest rating because, rating because he has the highest number, and that number is odd number, which is yang number. Okay. The numbers are given yang and yin too. Odd numbers are yang numbers, and uh, even numbers are yin. Okay. And so that's why the rat is the first. Uh, the ox, let's see, ox has four, even four toes per yin. Therefore, it's a, a um, even number. Oh, I'm sorry, I may, must have made a mistake here. Uh, ox is an in because he, she has an even number. So it's an in. Uh, ox is, is an in. Tiger has five uh, toes per limb. Therefore, it's an odd number, and tiger is a young. Rabbit has four. That's even. Therefore, it's in. So uh, the 12 animals are set um, alternate, in an alternate order. Rat is a yang, then ox is a yin, tiger yang, rabbit yin, dragon yang, snake yin, etc. So that's how the order was set. And, you know, I, I think, why 
whole destiny <coughs> depends on the here I was born. Going to the philosophy of yin and yang and fire elementary school and fortune tellers and charms. And my whole destiny depends on the month. The months are also given uh, the same number of animal names. Okay? Um, and also my destiny depends on the day I was born. Which is which also has twelve animal names. Each day uh, has these names. And then the most important factor about uh, telling my destiny, who I would become, who I am, depends on the hour of my birth, which also is divided into the twelve sections named after these animals. And I'm just having a little bit of trouble <laughs> thinking. My whole destiny relies on the number of toes for him of these animals. Are you happy about that? So I just wanted to point those out about the system. The system. Okay, here's another story. Now, how, how popular are these things way? and fortune-telling and shamanistic ideas based on 12 animals and five elements. The X-ray ideas are all over the world, not just in Korea, not just in China. This is in the United States. This uh, the, uh, left uh, drawing is uh, a house of a professor from Taiwan. And he was teaching political science at the University of Wyoming. And he, his house was in our neighborhood. And we visited his house many times. And uh, he, his house is facing the front gate of, you know, the white door. Oh. The white door faces west. And in the Yin and Yang and Five Elementary School, which also designate seasons to these um, uh, elements. And uh, the, according to the direction in the uh, in an Yang and Five Elements philosophy, West is not their birth. West, in fact, is where the dead people go. Okay? So in Feng Shui, uh, you don't want to face West. You don't want your house or your room to face West. If it does, you have to do something to counter that. So, uh, built a fence all around his house, and he made a fake, fake gate. He, he wants the gods to believe that his real gate is this one right here. And that face is south, which is a good, auspicious direction for houses to face. So this is the kind of things way practices. Um, uh, if um, your uh, house is um, uh, the door opens is very wide, oh, that's no good because good luck is going to leak out. And so, or uh, bad evil uh, evil spirit will be coming right in if your door is very wide. So what they do, famous way experts would recommend, usually recommend placing a mirror right there, facing the door, and so that the evil spirits coming in will just pull that out. Okay? There are many things like this. They're all based on the, uh, the um, in and yang and the school. Here, this one is a building in Hong Kong. We took this picture, I think, in 2006 or so when we were visited. And this building is uh, in the middle of um, in the middle of a uh, uh, Hong Kong downtown. And uh, here is a big mountain here. And while they were building this, uh, some things way experts said, "No, this building is no good." because the, there's mountain spirits who bless people down there. The mountain spirits will not be able to move freely down, downward and bless people. 
And so they made a big hall right in the middle of the building to allow the mountain spirits to come through. So this is just um, just hundreds and hundreds of thousands of examples of like this in Taiwan and Hong Kong and China. Um, and I'm sure we'll get through. Later on, I'll tell you about uh, at a, a house in Sagong. Uh, Mr. Kim, uh, Mr. Shin led this tour of uh, Korean folk religions, and he pointed this out uh, where um, the one of the two you know, most famous Confucian scholars lived in Isabong. I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, uh, how popular, how powerful um, is fortune telling? Well, apparently it's very powerful and very popular. Uh, this is um, a woman in LA. Her name is Chiwen. Um, and she has 30 newspapers carrying her monthly and daily fortunes in US, Korea, and uh, China and uh, Canada. And, and you know, this person is right here in Hintadong. I took this picture. Um, just in the street uh, corner, uh, a sign. This sign usually says these things. Uh, change the names, um, or create new names, or uh, tell you which, lucky, which is the lucky day for you to move to a certain place, or um, make decisions of uh, importance. Not match uh, Koreans, even today, they will, most of the people will not get married. Uh, without even Bukha consulting to see if they match with the person that they uh, plan to marry. And face uh, uh, reading and Sajjo, four pillars. Uh, four pillars and um, uh, eight characters is the main principle of fortune telling. Four pillars mean the year of your birth, uh, month of your birth, Day of your birth and time of your birth, and uh, and then um, um, eight characters. So the, those are uh, four uh, pillars and eight characters uh, become the basis of telling your fortune. Okay. So um, uh, uh, another fortune teller here. And this is the great aunt, my mother. This is my mother, and this is her aunt, my great aunt, who was a shaman. I ate her food all through my childhood, all the way through uh, high school and uh, college. Um, so I um, conducted an informal survey of uh, younger generation Koreans to see how fortune telling is affecting them, whether they really believe these things. And it was not a very large survey, it was only three people. Uh, but they were, <laughs> they were <laughs> between the ages of 40 and 45. And uh, interestingly, all three of them said in, uh, on the question, uh, rate uh, the degree of belief the degree you believe in these fortune tellers uh, rated uh, from 0 to 10, 10 being the strongest degree. And they all are 2. In other words, they were not believers. But toward the end, I had the question about uh, naming. When you name your children, did you consult a fortune teller? All three of them said yes. Well, I thought they didn't believe in these things. They marked number two in the first question. But toward the end, they said they all went to the fortune teller to get their children's names. They said, better, um, better, uh, be, um, better be um, safe. Better be safe than sorry. Yeah, that's, that's what they said. So, uh, which kind of gives me the case 
that these younger generation, all, although they're kind of cool and they're sophisticated, they're modern and they're into like, uh, technology and science, and uh, they say, well, this is like superstition. Uh, we don't believe that. Okay, they like to have that uh, kind of uh, denying attitude. But when it comes to something like naming your children, you know, better safe than sorry is the rule. And one of the men uh, actually said he doesn't believe it, but if he is called something negative, then he cannot, it haunts him. He cannot get rid of it out of his mind. For example, once his parents went to a fortune teller and got his fortune told. And the fortune teller said, he is married and has children now and happy. But the fortune teller said, when he is 50 years old, he would find another woman and he would divorce. Well, this poor man, <laughs> this poor man has been bothered by this all these years of marriage. It doesn't seem very fair uh, to dispense a uh, negative thing like that. If it, the positive things I can understand, it just kind of empowers people and makes them happy and uh, helps them do better in their, whatever they are doing. But often very negative and hurtful things will come up. I will share more stories in a minute. Okay, so uh, the, there are these um, uh, the, these philosophers just thought of everything. Uh, they uh, designated seasons uh, to the five elements. They designated emotions. They wood. Wood is related to anger. Fire is related to love. Uh, anxiety. Earth is uh, related to anxiety and joy, etc., etc. And the directions, here's the directions. Spring is um, uh, represented by dragon and it's a yang. And um, the color, they even designated colors. And blue green is the, uh, is the uh, dragon, spring, uh, and wood. Characteristics of wood is the east direction. And they even designated the days of the week. Thursday. Thursday is wood. And um, uh, summertime uh, is represented by Phoenix. And the color is red. And it faces south. And that's fire. Element of fire. And that's um, Tuesday. Hayori. Hwa is Fire. So um, all these five elements, they all have been given um, attributes. And how important is this? Very important. There's no city in Korea and China that has not been chosen for the right reason. Um, they, they thoroughly um, investigate the terrain, and according to the, uh, these uh, principles, that location has to fit the building. Otherwise, they would not build their cities or villages. Or, uh, so I'll show you what I mean. Oh, this one uh, shows the chart. Uh, shows the chart. Uh, some of you, how many of you do not know what your sign is? What year you were born? I think you know what animal <laughs> zodiac sign year you were born. If you're not, if you were born in January or February, your uh, birth year animal zodiac sign is very tricky because it goes by the lunar calendar, and lunar New Year sometimes does not start until uh, January 31st or even February 16th, like this year. Uh, the lunar new year 2018 does not start until February 16th. So those of you who were born in January or February, you really need to um, consult this chart. 
to make sure which year is your zodiac year. So, um, I have provided for you, if you would like it, uh, to give me your email address and I'll send it to you. Uh, I meant to bring some copies so you could uh, uh, look at it. And this is the food chart. They even thought of what kinds of food you must eat. If you are a dog ear person and you are born in dog ear, dog um, time, or monkey month, but tiger day, those combinations mean you must be need, need, need no tofu. Whatever. <laughs> you, I was told I should not eat uh, cucumbers. I love cucumbers. I can't live without cucumbers. So they thought of everything. And how popular are these ideas? All over the world, as I mentioned. This is United States stamp. A couple of last year or the year before, they made these uh, anniversary um, memorial stamps showing all these zodiac animals. Um, and this is Chinese um, lucky days. People consult the lucky days um, when they have important decisions to make. Which day should you get married? Which day should you move into an apartment? All these um, they consult. Okay, as I mentioned, um, uh, location, a city, site, uh, is thoroughly investigated and the uh, site has to fully uh, meet the requirements, all the various requirements. This is the map of Seoul. According to Peng Sui, um, there, is, there needs to be a um, white tiger on the west side. You remember the chart earlier that we saw earlier showed the, the, uh, the directions. Uh, south, uh, white tiger, where's the white tiger? Tiger is uh, here and it's white and it shows the west side, okay? And so um, in this picture, there's the white tiger on the west side, okay? And so there needs to be a, a, a kind of tiger-shaped something on that line, maybe tiger-shaped um, ridge tiger-shaped um, hill, tiger-shaped rock. If there's no tiger-shaped anything, they might build a little, uh, you know, build a uh, form that looks like a uh, tiger. Uh, on the east side, it's a blue dragon. This is um, a dragon-shaped ridge. Okay. And Dongmang is the south. And Dongmang um, is red. So that's why the south is shown as um, Phoenix. And the center is um, uh, actually in, in this philosophy, there are five directions, east, west, uh, south, north, and center. So there are five directions. And the center is very important. Um, center uh, is, uh, the color is yellow. As you know, many of you know, Yellow or gold is the color of the um, emperor. In China, emperor's uh, gold is always gold or yellow. And Korean kings were never allowed to use yellow uh, for their gold color because Korean kings were uh, inferior to Chinese emperors. Uh, and so yellow is the color of the center. and. Uh, uh, in Seoul, that's where Ho Chi is. And uh, later, I will uh, talk a little bit about how uh, these ideas, in and Yang and Five Element School ideas, uh, become combined with um, uh, Confucian um, philosophy. And so, Xin, Xin is the faith or belief. And so, Xin right here, Xin at the center, Bo Xin Ga. Bo Xin Ga has Xin in the middle, meaning faith. That's a Confucian idea um, for the center. So, Bo Xin Ga 
uh, got there uh, not just by accident. It was all thoroughly investigated and decided on. This is how important this philosophy has been for Chinese and Koreans for thousands of years. Uh, and of course, um, the uh, uh, Yang and Five Elements School uh, is, sim uh, is symbolized right here in the Korean flag. And theoretically, the, the um, Yang um, and Yin, uh, they occupy equal space, equal size space. Theoretically, ideally, yin and yang are supposed to be equal, and they balance and harmonize. That's the idea. But in practice, uh, yang forces are uh, considered uh, positive and action and light and brightness. And so yin, yang forces are encouraged to expand, to expand. But when in the feminine force begins to uh, make itself present in some ways, which I will discuss in just a minute, then something has to be done. Yang force has to be used on top of the in to control the in. Um, so this is why I, I, I feel that uh, in and yang idea really is male-centered Um Okay, here's the, here's the uh, Confucian uh, idea of where uh, things should be located north. Uh, north. In Confucian uh, system, North represents knowledge. In Yin and Yang and Five Elements School, that corresponds to water. And that means black tortoise and winter and Yin feminine element. Uh, east, uh, in uh, Confucianism, it's represented by Yin, which means kindness. And that is in the east. There's an escape, and that's represented by wood, and the, the animal the south is represented in Confucianism with ye, which is manners. And in the Ilanian five, five Elements School, that's south, and that's fire. West is justice. In um, Confucian system, it's we which is justice, and so that's west, and the animal is quite tiger, as we saw before. Center, again, center means faith in um, the kitchen system, and in Yin and Yang Five Elements School, that is um, yellow, and um, that's where Bu Xin, this Xin means faith, so Bu Xin Pavilion is white, in the middle here, pushing up. And the love match, I threw this in uh, for fun, but it's really more just for fun because this is based on the zodiac year. Which zodiac year you were born? It does not um, uh, consider what month you were born, what day you were born, and what hour you were born. The hour you were born is supposed to uh, be the most uh, important element because that uh, predicts uh, your personality and your character. Okay? So since this is based only on uh, the zodiac year, you can still have fun to see if you've been sleeping with the right person or not. <laughs> Know what you'll do if you have been uh, sleeping with the wrong partners, and you know your zodiac sign. Uh, the compatibility shows a, a skull, a skull. Um, uh, but um, 
So, but there are plenty of love uh, signs here uh, to find some good matches here. Okay, uh, this is uh, probably the most important uh, point I want to get to. The zodiac signs are given uh, personality characteristics, like the horse here. Horse here persons are supposed to have independent spirit, uh, aggressive stubborn and they love um, the traveling uh, they, uh, they are not good at being obedient or being quiet uh, or shy and therefore uh, horse year uh, is not desired by parents to have their girl children in horse year they want to have male children and so, um, in 1970s, when the ultrasound and other sex detecting devices were uh, made available in Korea, and later on in China and other countries too, um, people began to uh, uh, perform sex selective abortion. And uh, female fetuses were aborted uh, in the zodiac years that carry male characteristics. So horse and tiger years have been chosen as being bad for girls. You know, the, they would just grow up to be like boys, and parents didn't want that. And so this shows. This is the horse year, and this is the horse year. In this horse year, um, this is not horse year. But in 1994 alone, this year, 30,000 female fetuses were awarded in Korea for some preference. Uh, this kind of coincides with um, the period of Korean history when uh, Korean people decided to have the limit the number of children to two per family for financial reasons, and etc. And the government encouraged the, uh, uh, families to have two children and have give them the quality love and time. And so um, families were uh, focusing on having two children and if, if they had the first daughter, first child, daughter, then the pressure was off. The second child had to be a boy. Uh, this all goes to Confucian uh, kind of son preference culture. Um, sons were preferred because, partly because they were the insurance, uh, insurance for parents and grandparents and social security system when social security system was not set up. And so uh, male children were preferred. And a um, uh, more important reason than those practical reasons why they preferred sons was the uh, ancestor worship ceremonies, Confucian ancestor worship ceremonies. Confucianism was started out as a philosophy, but when they added the access to worship ceremonies, it took on a religious um, dimension. And uh, if uh, the, the family did not have a male, a male children to offer access to worship ceremonies to dead ancestors, three generations of dead ancestors, then the dead ancestors, ancestors did not go to heaven. So uh, spiritual life existence depending on having male children. So that's how important it was. That's why the, the male preference began, began to be so strong. So uh, this shows the uh, years, first years, the abortion of female fetuses jumped. And um, during that time, the number of uh, boys, 117 boys to 100 girls born. But gradually, the abortion of uh, female children uh, went down, partially because of the Christianity. Of course, Christianity is patriarchal too, but in terms of uh, abortion, they were anti-abortion for the world. And so, uh, and for other reasons too, uh, the abortion rate began to go down. Uh, and now, 2013 on, uh, the rate of boys is 107 to 100 girls. Now, uh, society is that uh, strive for uh, a balanced, good, healthy, balanced 
in, in calculation uh, goes for 104 to 5 boys to 100 girls. South Korea is not there yet. Their rate of boys being born is 107 to 100 girls. And this roughly, roughly translates to about 6,000 female fetuses being born in a year for some preference. Based on you know 30,000 that were uh, 30,000 that were aborted in 1994, uh, and so thousands of female fetuses uh, are still being aborted. Uh, it's been illegal. It's been made illegal. How how can all these abortions be going on? It's because uh, abort uh, removing dead fetuses is illegal. Removing live fetus is illegal. But there should nobody there watching whether recording whether the baby is live or dead when the baby comes out. And so that's how the loophole uh, was created and then uh, the abortion continues. Uh, well, in China and, China and India, uh, things are even worse. Even in uh, 2016, uh, 115 boys to 100 girls. Uh, now, North Korea, aren't you curious? North Korea. Everybody's focused on North Korea uh, these days. Uh, 105 boys per 100 girls. So North Korea is close to the norm, the norm that uh, healthy societies strive for. And this is the uh, 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 cemeteries for uh, aborted children that uh, Pope Francis is to be there from. Okay. I need the credit now a little bit. This is the uh, Confucian Scholars House in, in Saigon. Uh, that uh, area is known for, known as uh, Widow's Day or Widow's Hall. Uh, every three years things happen and in that neighborhood men die and left widows. So it became known as Widow's Hall. And uh, Peng Sui expert said, well, you know, there's the invisible hole in that neighborhood. And that invisible hole, uh, guess what is a hole? A hole means a big phallic symbol to fill that. Okay? It's a tree uh, in the form of a Chinese scholar's tree. It's a male in form filling the hole. And um, uh, so, uh, the famous uh, Yi Yul Bo, Confucian scholar Yi Yi, survived. His, he, he did not make his life a, a, a widow. Uh, because, uh, partially because of the tree, but uh, also, uh, Feng Shui experts say that if a person is of a gigantic hero type of person, he is a huge man figure. So, enough of a yin figure to counteract the yin uh, hole that's created there. And uh, another, uh, a Buddhist monk um, uh, said, uh, did the interpretation of this, and he said, uh, if it's not a tree, at least a huge building uh, of a company's huge building would do the same to counteract the hole of the yin feminine that was just acting up every two years and uh, causing death of males. Um, okay, well, this is um, just the story of um, pagodas uh, in Buddhist temples. Uh, they all have odd number uh, pagodas. There's never a two story pagoda or a four story pagoda. That's because this. Um, This um, uh, this um, is considered a female in a space. That's where the uh, remains of master monks and Buddha uh, are buried. Uh, Buddha's um, uh, jewel is buried, and uh, master monks' remains are buried. And so that is considered in uh, space, just like the hole in Isabong. It's an underground space. Uh, in, uh, it's in space. And so they needed uh, to build odd number of uh, pagodas to counteract the end. So this is what I am trying to point out. Uh, 
when there is a damn force out of control, that's fine, that's good. Nothing needs to be done about that. But when there's when the Venezuelan experts perceive if forces are out of control and in trouble, then something again has to come in and put that out and or counterbalance. Um, oh, this is good. These are good good luck charms that uh, fortune tellers or shamans or Buddhist monks give out. I got uh, these charms made by Buddhist monk himself, who is a staff monk at Tsongsa Temple, we visited back in um, uh, September. Not these, but he made similar ones. Okay, this one, um, this one, this one is good. This one is given to a woman uh, to prevent her from conceiving more girls. And this um, uh, this charm is called Nine Daughter Curse. This works against Nine Daughter Curse. If one uh, gets this and carries it and prays, uh, she will not have nine daughters, which is a real bad news. Now, um, she should start wearing this after the first uh, girl's birth, that's the best. Not wait until she has five. And, but, interestingly, in the uh, book of charms that I studied, there was no uh, nine boy curse. There's no such thing. Because the more boys you have, the better. Bhutitanam, uh, wealth, and many sons. The usual greeting we give out to other Koreans at New Year, and then any kind of New Year. Uh, I this this one um, is given to uh, a woman who had 50 arranged dates, but with no success. So it, it, a, a person like this is like my friend, best friend, Miss Kim. She is a host. This woman probably is a horse sign person. Unlucky. Nobody wants to give their uh, son a horse sign girl. And so this poor woman uh, had 50 or more uh, dates and nothing ended in the altar. So she has to uh, keep this kind of. Um... Now, this one has nothing to do with this lecture at all. But it is so much fun, I had to just throw it in. This is to keep uh, the husband from having an affair. If the husband is already having an affair, then uh, this uh, charm should be carried by the, uh, it should be put in the pocket of the man, somewhere in the clothing, along with three mouse tails and three cat tails. <laughs> and you must do it without him knowing about it. <laughs> After a week, you can imagine why women would run away from it. <laughs> and again, um, there was no good luck charm to drive um, the men away from women. Uh, all right, in my own life story, which is told in the book, um, we saw. Uh, um, I was born with a uh, twin brother, as a twin with a brother, uh, boy. And of course, according to this things where um, the fortune telling principles, they should not be kept together. Generally, boy and girl uh, twins were not kept together. In the belief that if they were kept together, they might become too close and become incestuous, or the girl might bring luck away from the boy. And of course, overall, they preferred boys. And so in my case, too, the family had two other sons. So there were a total of three sons, including my twin brother. But I was with me. So that story is in the, in the book. And this is my birth my father's tomb. And this is my birth uh, side of the family that I was reunited later on 
way after I graduated from Southern University and after I came back to the state. Um, this is my twin brother right here. He was a professor of economics in Seoul National University and he is in our prior. He has many books written. One is, uh, Are You Happy? It's an economist's view of happiness. This is another way of showing uh, gender bias. Uh, when boys are boys were born, uh, the rope showing uh, strong with a uh, nice pretty red, red peppers uh, was dripped uh, to announce the baby's boy's birth. But if it's a girl, uh, lumps of charcoal <laughs> were uh, strong in strings. It's all black lumps of charcoal. Uh, and so um, this um, goes back to uh, how women were oppressed and biased, uh, unequally treated. Uh, even though in 1989 uh, the um, Family Reform Act was done and uh, women were given a lot more rights in uh, divorce and inheritance law and labor laws, but still South Korean women uh, in these um, uh, surveys are economists. Um, these are the best places for working women to live in. And uh, Japan is second to the bottom, and Korea is always at the bottom. The top is usually Nordic countries like Finland and Norway, and sometimes New Zealand. Too. Ah, okay, this is the final uh, frame, uh, so we're close to the end. Uh, I added this because. This land takes its character from my house. And uh, according to the fortune teller's um, uh, face uh, reading, mouse shaped face is bad news. But this man uh, was a nobleman's son, and he had high hopes to become a high government official. But he had a face that was like a mouse, you know, and blue eyes. And so he was very upset. And once, uh, he consulted a Buddhist monk, and the Buddhist monk looked at him and he said, you, you, the best you can do is become a boat, a ferry boat operator, which is one of the bottom uh, long uh, occupation, along with butchers and prostitutes. Uh, and so he was very dejected, and uh, uh, he walked away. But he muttered to himself, well, if all I can hope for is to become a um, very good operator, I guess I can at least try to save as many people. When the Buddhist monk heard this, he said, hey, come back, come back. What did you say? So he repeated it. I said I could at least save some lives. And the Buddhist monk said, okay, that's it. Your face. And Fortune tellers all going to every part of your body to show you nose, certain nose made to uh, rich, etc. But uh, what is most important is what is in your heart. This man said, in, in his heart, he, in his heart, he had the desire to save people's lives. And so the Buddhist monk said, that desire will overcome the shape of your face. And everything Four pillars and eight characters. That all goes down the drain. You will become the greatest man. You will save thousands of lives. And actually, he became the right hand man to six different kings in Joseph Dynasty. His name is Humpty. I introduced it to you um, as one of the three main points that I want to leave with you that all these uh, zodiac signs and the shapes of your face and the shapes of your bone in your skull and all that doesn't make any, uh, any uh, doesn't do any good unless what is in your heart is good. If that is good, everything else doesn't matter. That's one thing I learned. I really like this Buddhist monk's um, uh, prediction. I had two other stories to share, but I ran out of time. But I do want to share two other points. One, 
I didn't mean this to be a mail bashing session. <laughs> Although I'd love to do that. <laughs> but I wanted it to uh, be more balanced to you uh, in that I wanted to point out that these male gen generated ideas of in and in also hurt men too. Like my father in my book. You know, because of the Sun Campus culture, my father had to get a second out to produce me other And but he was madly in love with my mother. So it became a trash. I know personally dozens and dozens of Korean men whose hearts were broken because they were madly in love with uh, women whose zodiac signs were all the children strong with the love match. And fortune teller said, you will get divorced in two years. Said, right. And hearts will go. Both male and female. Men were also victims of this gender violence. That's what I wanted to point out. One more thing. Just one more thing is women work, uh, in, many, in many cases, women were accomplices. They also went along with the sun purpose culture. They born into. Maybe some of them say, well, they were conditioned that way, to think that way. They had no choice but to go along. I kind of doubt that. I think in many cases, women could have chosen to be kind to their daughters in law. Just because they were abused by their mothers in law doesn't mean they have to abuse their daughters in law, for example. So that's what I wanted to do. Thank you. Especially have 
had somebody like your husband or family uh, other family members or friend to give you the red thing and you wear it. And there are tons and tons of advice what you can do with the house to make your dog here to go better for you. And women, dog here women have to be careful this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are many, many ready to be such things where a virgin telling you. Uh, experts can offer you for money. I agree. Um, I would think so, yes. Um, but and, and these um, uh, philosophies are uh, all written out in textbooks. In fact, I meant to uh, tell you about the textbooks uh, that they study. There are textbooks. And there is a village in Miyari, Hong uh, Song Dong, uh, Miyari Hill area, is a whole uh, blind fortune teller's village. And they all uh, say they study so many books. They are not just the shamanistic people who just pull ideas out of their heads. Their traditions uh, are all based on books and rules in the books. But anyway, in Japan too, I really didn't look into what's going on in Japan. But I would suspect that that is also uh, really prevalent there. I will let you know how this will be such a Could you repeat the question, please? She was going to be a bag and she was she was elected in the year of the bag in 2012. into it, but uh, people born in Dragon here are people who um, are shops, especially around university campuses, and I often see young women in like early 20s, freshmen or young university students. Have you spoken to anybody in that age demographic, and do you have any um, explanations as to what I think is this growth of this industry? Uh, no, but I will. Uh, I live in Xinjiang, so I'm very familiar with the university, yeah. and there, there are just, every other house seems to be uh, Fortune Teller's house. And Hongi from the university area is a very, very uh, concentrated. Um, yeah, I, I work at Sukte and I've noticed them on the main street yeah. leading up to the campus. I think uh, the young population being kind of educated about their future, being uncertain. Uncertainty is the bread and uh, bread of these Fortune Tellers. Uncertainty. Do you know how much it costs to get a reading? My students always seem to be concerned about money and saving money. Um, so I'm just curious how much are these people charging 
for like uh, a reading? Yes, some, some people had a block, and in which they said they uh, paid, uh, they paid like 5,000 to uh, 10,001, but then apparently they were served some drinks, teas, and the teas were very expensive. Uh. <laughs> And so one blogger at least complained that, you know, the fortune telling was kind of cheap, but other things were. And it's, uh, the Chinese would not have cheap. Okay, thank you very much.